As professionals, we need to advocate for the rights of our clients. This role means we can't be passive communicators. We must be able to deal with conflict instead of avoiding it. It is important as professionals to learn the difference between aggressive and assertive communication. In this video, some tools and tips for being assertive will be presented. You don't want to be aggressive. Sorry, that was a little aggressive of me. Aggressive people do not respect the rights of others. They try to dominate conversations and use you statements. They often use anger or aggressive nonverbal behavior to bully other people into feeling guilt or shame. Here are a few examples. You must be stupid. You know better than to call the doctor for that. You didn't give me work to do, therefore it's your fault I didn't contribute to the project. You need to pick up some slack around here and do some work. What happens? The other person has an emotional reaction and non-productive conflict will escalate. Assertive communication allows you to stand up for your rights without impinging on others. It is a responsible way to say no, to ask for what you want, to express positive and negative feelings, to initiate, continue, and terminate relationships. In assertive communication, use I statements. This approach will prevent emotional reactions from the other person you are talking to. The desk script is one way to plan how to be assertive in difficult situations. The desk script is one way to plan how to be assertive in difficult situations. It stands for the key words in the four steps of this skill. Describe, express, specify, and consequences. First, describe the behavior. Clearly describe to the other person their exact behavior that is of concern. Be concise. If you talk too much, it might confuse them or anger them, which makes your point less effective. Be sure to avoid making judgmental statements. Being judgmental causes the other person to become defensive, which means they won't listen to what you have to say. For example, here's something I could say to my son. I noticed that you forgot to put your dishes in the dishwasher after supper last night. Then, the next step is to express your thoughts and feelings about the behavior that bothers you. Again, you want to be clear and concise. Make sure to use I statements and avoid sarcasm. Which statement sounds better? You don't care about the mess you leave or the extra work it causes me. Or, I feel like you don't care about the mess or extra work it causes me when dishes are left out. The person you are talking to is less likely to be offended by the second statement. The first one sounds judgmental and is not open for them to clarify that they do care. Once you've expressed your feelings, specify the change in behavior you would like to see. Again, you want to be concise and clear. Be realistic. Avoid asking for changes in personality or attitude. In this example, I could say, I would really appreciate it if you could remember to clean up your dishes after meals. Then, tell them the consequences of the positive changes. Tell them the positive consequences that will result for both of you if the person does change the requested behavior. Focus on positive consequences. Avoid threats or ultimatums. For example, if everyone puts their dishes away, there will be less of a mess to clean up later, which means more time for both of us to do fun things like play video games together. Here is one more example you can apply to the workplace. Yesterday, when you did not show up for our meeting at 2 p.m., I waited for the duration of our scheduled hour. It meant that I was not able to use my time well because I was unsure if you were going to show up. Please send me a quick message to let me know if you're running late or need to reschedule our meeting. That way, I can adjust my plans and we can continue our discussion at a mutually convenient time. The care approach is another way to take action in a calm, controlled, assertive way. It's very similar to the desk script. Care stands for clarify, articulate, request, and encourage. Clarify what the problem is. It is important to be specific about the behavior that is of concern. Focus on the behavior to be changed. Articulate why the behavior is a problem. State why the behavior is likely to hinder them, irritate others, or how it makes you feel. Respectfully request a change in behavior. Encourage them to change by offering the positive consequences of changing. Again, it's best to focus on positive consequences here. However, in some cases, 
You may also need to indicate the negative implications of failing to change. You will notice that this acronym can also be applied to the previous example. Pick the acronym you like best and use it for practice. Another tip to remember as the conversation progresses is to replace but with and. Take but out of your vocabulary. It makes a big difference. Which statement sounds better? I see what you are saying, but I think there's another way to look at it. Or, I see what you are saying, and I think there's another way to look at it. Although the difference is small, the second opinion is less likely to cause an emotional reaction. The but in there makes it sound like you're disregarding what they just said. Being assertive, not aggressive, will empower you to resolve conflict, advocate for you and your clients while improving relationships in the workplace and at home. It is also important to learn how to recognize early signs of a conflict and intervene before it escalates. Pay attention to the verbal and nonverbal cues of clients and colleagues to notice when a problem might be starting. For more videos, please subscribe, comment to let me know what you want to see, and be sure to like the videos you find useful. Thank you.